I greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I believe that today we are closing our series of righteousness. Hallelujah. How many of you have grown in righteousness? How many of you are living a guilt-free and condemnation-free life? I can't hear you. Hallelujah. Even though you don't say amen, I'm receiving calls from some of you. They say, Daddy, since you started teaching us about righteousness, things are changing. Things are changing in our lives. The perspective that we had about ourselves has changed. Hallelujah. You need to know that until you change your perspective about yourself, you won't be able to change anything around you. Hallelujah. Who are you? You need to ask yourself this question. Who am I in Christ? And your response should be, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And you ask yourself, what is righteousness? The ability to stand before God without feeling what? Any sense of guilt or what? Or condemnation. So you stand before God as if Christ is standing before God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So now, today I want us to talk about the blood of Jesus. The blood of righteousness. Amen. Hallelujah. I can have my crow wave to unfreeze your amens. So I will prefer if you release them deliberately. Hallelujah. There you go. There you go. Hallelujah. No. I thank God for you. The blood of righteousness. The blood of Jesus Christ. So, I'm believing God that today, I just want to narrate to you the blood. How, why the blood? Where does it come from? And we just give a few examples there and then. And I believe God in the process you'll be understanding yourselves. Hallelujah. Uh, Father, I thank you for your word. Bless your word, mighty God. It's about to read your word. Let your word, mighty God, never come back to you. Word, let your word prosper in the thing that we send it to in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us go to Exodus. Exodus chapter 5. We're supposed to read from 1 to 21. I will try by all means to jump other scriptures so that we can get to the gist of the matter. Exodus chapter 5 verse 1. And let us look at the verse. The first verse is one that is more important. Afterwards, Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, that says the Lord God of Israel, let my people go that they may hold a feast for me in the wilderness. The first commandment that was given to Pharaoh by God was let my, I think the, the, the key word here that you should focus on is my, my people go. If God calls you his own, hallelujah, if God calls you his own, there is something about, there is something special about you. You, you have received a particular grace of being in right standing with him. God did not say, let the Hebrews go. He did not say, let the Israelites go. He said, let my people go. Hallelujah. There are situations that are holding you back. That can only listen to the voice of God. When he says, let my daughter go. Let my son go. But why do God, why did God call the Israelites his people? I mean, for a long time they were not worshipping him. For a long time they were in slavery. They did not even, they were not given an opportunity to slaughter. 
to, to go and offer offerings. Bulls, goats, and all that as, as the Levites used to do. No. They did not do anything like that. They were not praying. Their lives was the life of slavery. But God said to Pharaoh, let my people go. How did God call them his people if they were not involved in what we call things that will call them God's people? What is it that God was looking at? It's important to, to think beyond the scripture. If God says, let my people go, what is it that God was looking at? What qualifies them to be called his people? Where did they get the right standing before God to be called his people? I mean, they are not even going to church. Let us, let us look at the scripture. Exodus 6. Exodus 6. Exodus 6, uh, verse 2 to 5. Are you there? And God spoke to Moses and said to him, I'm the Lord. I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as God Almighty. But by my name, Lord, I was not known to men. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let us uh, dissect this one. He said, I appeared to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as who? As God Almighty. Meaning he appeared as Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts. The one who has power to do anything. But he said, but I was not yet known to the man as what? Lord. What is Lord? The one who owns your life. The one who directs your life. That's why they say, he's the Lord of my life. He's the Lord of my family. He said, he was not yet known as the Lord. In other ways, he's saying, I'm appearing to the Israelites now as their Lord. But yet, they did not know me. All that they know is the life of suffering. Is the life of slavery. They don't know that I own them. They are my people. Hallelujah. But why did he call them his people? Well, I'm going to go back again to the question that I asked you. These guys, all that they know that they wake up early in the morning, they go and make bricks, being beaten, being enslaved for 400 years. That's the life that they were living. Am I talking to someone? Maybe I'm talking to you here. Your family has been like this. All generations, you don't know peace. The whole family, the pattern is the same. They all suffer the same things. Let's say, for example, maybe for 400 years, the whole family has been going through the same thing. And yet, they have the God. He said, I was known as God Almighty, not as the Lord. The Lord means I'm the one who saves my own. I'm the one who reigns over my own. I control the affairs of my own. Therefore, Pharaoh, you might have been having an upper hand on the past generations for the last 400 years, but now I, the Lord, has appeared. But still, why is he their Lord? 
They never worshipped him. Let, let, let us read. He said, I have also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their pilgrimage in which they were strangers. I have also heard their groaning. I have also heard the groaning of the children of Israel whom the Egyptians keep in bondage. And I have remembered my covenant. Hallelujah. So now you understand why he says their Lord. Because of he did what? He remembered his covenant. All of them were not yet born. When God entered into a blood covenant with, with, with Abraham, the people that he's about to rescue were not yet born. I wanted to look at something. Let us go to Genesis 51 quickly. Not Genesis 51, Genesis 15. Genesis 15. I just want to look at a particular passage, but I would advise you to go and read it at home. You know, can I? No, you know what? I'm going to read it. Ne? I, I want, I, I, because if I don't read the most of it, we will miss the context of the message. Genesis 15, let's start from verse 1. I'll be fast, but I'll advise you to go and read it again at home. Genesis 15. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision, saying, Do not be afraid. I'm your shield, your exceedingly great reward. But Abraham said, Lord God, what will you give me? See, I go childless, and the heir of my house is Elazar of Damascus. Meaning he was a Syrian. Then Abraham looked, and then Abraham said, Look, you have given me no offspring. Indeed, one born in my house is my heir. No one born in my house is my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, This one shall, be not, shall not be your heir, but the one who shall come, come from your own body shall be your heir. Then he brought, his, he brought him outside and said, Look now towards heaven and count the stars. If you are able to number them, he said to him, so shall, be your de- so shall your descendants be. Check this. Verse 6 is important. Underline it. And he believed in the Lord. And he counted it to him for what? Righteousness. So Abraham believing the word of God was counted for him what? Righteousness. Underline that one. Then he said to him, I'm the Lord who brought you out of the Ur of the Chaldeans. To give you this land to inherit it, that is the former, that is Iraq. The old, that's the old children is Iraq, is now, is the now Iraq. And he said, let go. And he said, and he said, Lord God, how shall I know, how shall I know that I will inherit it? Underline that. It is the, this is the, without this scripture, there will be no covenant. Without this verse. Verse 8. And, and he said, Lord God, how will I know that I will inherit it? Then God God gave him an instruction. He said to him, bring me the three-year-old heifer. It's a cow, a female one. A three-year-old female goat, a three-year-old ram, and a turtle ram, and a, no, a male one, a male cow, and a, and a young pigeon. Then he brought all of these to him and cut them in, into two down the middle and placed each piece opposite to each other. He did not cut the beds into two. And then the vultures came the carcass, on the carcass and Abraham drove them away. I will teach you about this. I know that I promise you a lot, but this one you have to know because it has to do with the covenant. So now focus. From 12 to 14, I want you to underline those ones. Verse 12 to 14, underline them. Verse 12 to 14, he said, Now when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abraham, and behold, a horror and great darkness fell upon him. Then he said to Abraham, Know certainly that your descendants will be strangers in the land that is not theirs and will serve them and they will afflict them for how many years? 400 years. And also the nation that that they will serve, I will judge. Afterwards, they will come out with what? Great possessions. Check it. Now as for you, you shall go to your fathers in peace. You shall be buried in a good old age. Okay. 
I'm skipping that one. Let's go to 17. When it came to pass, when the sun came down, it was dark. That behold, there appeared a smoking oven, a, burn, a burning torch that passed between the two pieces. On the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham. Can you see this? On the same day, the Lord did what? Made a covenant with who? With Abraham. He said, to your descendants, I've given this land from the river of Egypt to the river or to the great river of Ephraim. That is up to Iraq. So, God commanded Abraham to cut the animal into two pieces. The blood flows between the two pieces. Guess who walks to, to, to form a covenant is God. Normally, in the olden days, when they, when they cut a covenant, the people who are, two people who are cutting the covenant, they cut the cow into two pieces, and the two people walk to show that I am I'm entering into a covenant with you, and you are entering into a covenant with me. So they will both walk in the middle of the two pieces in the blood to show that it's a what? It's a blood covenant. So this time, Abraham is not working. God instructs Abraham to cut the animals. And God alone he said, I will walk because I'm swearing by myself. I don't need Abraham. Abraham needs me as God. Do you understand? So, God enters into a covenant. That there is not as important for God to say, on God, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham. And this covenant, it was the representation of the blood of Jesus Christ. Can we prove that? Let us go to Revelation 13 verse 8. Revelation 13 verse 8. Revelation 13 verse 8. I want you to see something quickly. And then we will continue. Because if you understand this. 13 verse 8. What does he say? All who dwell on the land will worship him. They are talking about Satan, whose name has not been written in the books of life, of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Meaning Jesus Christ was crucified from the foundation of the world. Before the world was, the blood was. Hallelujah. Before the world was, the blood is. So whenever God has been instructing the, the people to slaughter to cut the animals into pieces. The blood of animals was reminding God of the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed before the foundation of the world. Before Jesus himself can come and present the blood. Are we together? Now let us go back to the gist of the matter. Then uh, Exodus 6. Can you go back to Exodus 6? Verse 2 to 5. Now, let's, let's read it again. And God spoke to Moses and said to him, I'm the Lord. I appear to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as God Almighty. But by my name, Lord, I was not known to them. Uh, my, my, my tablet is misbehaving. I'll need a charger quickly. He said, by my name, Lord, I was not known to them. I have established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their pilgrimage. And I've also heard the groaning of my children. You see, when God, I'm not going to read it completely. When God speaks, he always refers back to the covenant. Hallelujah. Are we together? When God speaks, he always refers back to what? To the covenant. He knows that. That's why you call him a what? A covenant keeping God. A God who keeps his covenant for a thousand generations. He knew that whatever that he's doing is based on the blood. 
The Israelites don't know him, but he knows the covenant. If we go quickly to Romans 5, verse 29, I'm trying to send this to me, to the phone, the whole message to the phone. If you go to Romans 5, verse, verse 29, Can, can somebody read it for me quickly? Yeah, Romans. It doesn't have 29. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Doesn't have 29. Do, do, do. Romans 5, verse 9. Just remove the two out of the 29, it will be 9. Amen. So my, minus 2. No, it's, a, it's, a, it's a biblical mathematics. You won't understand it. You'll understand it when you grow up one day. <laughs> He said, much more than having now be justified by his blood, we shall saved from the wrath through him. The justification, check this, the justification of the children of Israel to be called God's people was based on the blood of covenant that God entered with Abraham that they can be called his people. Hallelujah. But pastor, what does this have to do with me? You are seated there. Jesus Christ is dead for you already. Before what comes before salvation is justification. Uh, if, you didn't, if you didn't understand. Hallelujah. You, you cannot be saved until you are justified. You are justified from what? You are justified from the sin and death that consumed the world by the fall of man or through the fall of man. When Abraham fell and committed sin, we were condemned, not justified. We were condemned to death. We were seen as the one whose ultimate end was the lake of fire. But when Jesus Christ died, we received the justification to be, to be what? To be saved. And after salvation, we became the righteousness of him through the justification of the blood. Are we together? Are we together? Do you know where you are standing right now? So most of you are still responding to the voice of Egypt. Why? As it happens, if you can go read uh, Exodus chapter 5, the children of Israel, they begin to, to complain. Okay, let's go to Exodus 6, verse 6 to 9. I want you to see something. I want you to see the life of the church. How the church is behaving today. Can you read it? Verse 6 to 9. Said, Therefore they said to the children of Israel, I'm the Lord. I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will rescue you. From, the, from their bondage. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm, with great judgments. I will take you as my people. I will be your God. Then you shall know that I'm the Lord your God who bring you out of, of out from the, under the burdens of the Egyptians. And I will bring you into the land which I saw to Abraham. Isaac and Jacob, I will give to you as a heritage. I'm the Lord so Moses spoke that to the children of Israel. Listen to that. Can you all read the last part? But they did not do what? They did not heed. Meaning they did not listen because, because of the pain that they were going through because of bondage. I want to put it to you that many of us here, all of us here, we have been justified for salvation through the blood of Jesus Christ that will give us a right standing 
to be able to stand before God as if we've never sinned. But many of us are not receiving the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Why? Because of the pains that we are going through and the experiences of life. Hallelujah. Our experiences of life are telling us that it is not true. God cannot do this. God cannot save you. I, I don't have the ability to stand before him. Moses, since you came to us and tell us that God is about to rescue us, check here, our slavery has been, has been increased. We are the ones who are going to fetch the straws for ourselves. They are punishing us more. That's the strategy of Satan. Whenever God is about to put you in a place of breakthrough, wherever God is about to put you in a place of upliftment, what will happen? You, your life will look like it's going to hell. You'll feel like you are going through hell. You'll feel like nothing else is working. You'll feel like even the things that used to be simple, they will become too difficult. Look here, the Israelites said to Moses, why did you do this to us? Before you came and tell us this God, whom we don't know, who is the God of our fathers, who is about to rescue us, we were fine. They were not fine. They were in slavery. They say they were fine because they were too used to the pains. Am I talking to someone who's, who's used to the pain? Please go check outside. There's a man walking. Am I talking to someone who, who's used to the pain? You are too used to the pains. If things, if things go well to your life, you get surprised. What? Me? This? No, it can't be me. And then the next comment will be, something is about to go horribly wrong. I'm too happy. And I know that when I'm happy like this, something is about to go terribly wrong. That is the spirit of Pharaoh. The spirit of Pharaoh doesn't want you to understand your position in Christ. The spirit of Pharaoh doesn't want you to understand your right standing in God. Can you we, can we, can we read it again? Exodus 6, verse 6 to 9 says, Therefore say to the children of Israel, I'm the Lord. Check the first promise. I'm the Lord. The second promise. I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. The third promise. I will rescue you from their bondage. The fourth promise. I will redeem you with an ostrich arm. With great judgments. The fifth promise. I will take you as my people. I will be your God. The sixth promise. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. Who brings you out from under the bread of Egyptians. The eighth promise, I will bring you into the land which I saw you to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I will give to you, you as heritage, I'm the Lord. So, so Moses spoke that to the children, but they did not listen. What made them not to listen? What makes people to continuously condemn themselves and judge themselves not to listen to the promises of God? Because they are too used to the praying. Check here. I like this NIV. Moses reported this to the children, but they did not listen to him because of their discouragement and what? And harsh labor. Hallelujah. Are you discouraged? Are you working in perpetual discouragement and pain? I want to put it to you today. You are justified by the blood of Jesus Christ. You have inherited salvation through the cross. You are now in the right standing with God. What do you do? You go back to the promises of God. Whatever God that has promised you. He said, I will be, I will bring them out. 
You cannot be brought out of the bondage until you believe. Am I talking to someone? The Bible says that in Genesis 50 said, Abraham believed God and it was counted as righteousness for him. How about us who are under the blood of Jesus? Hallelujah. What are you going through? Let me tell you the promises that God has for you today. He said he'll rescue you from the bondage. He'll redeem you with his outstretched hand. Who are the candidates of redemption? Those who have received the Lord Jesus Christ, their personal Lord and Savior. God is not saying, maybe I will. He's saying, because you are my people, because of your right standing with me, through the justification of the blood, you deserve to be rescued. Not because of your works. I would understand that righteousness doesn't, it has everything to do with the covenant. When you believe the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior by the righteousness that is, that is brought to you through the justification in his blood, you will become what? The saved one. Most of us have been standing in the same place. Even those who in the world laugh at you when you have been born again but there is nothing to show for in your life. You are suffering like us. No, no, you are not like us. After all, we are better than you by far. I don't go to church, but when I left here, how I, I'm better than you. And what do you do? You bend your head, shoulders down. I'm condemned. I'm in bondage. Nothing looks like will ever work for me. That's who I am. We, even when you pray, you pray, God, if you are willing, please save me and my family. However, if this is my cup, you are now misinterpreting the prayer of Jesus Christ. If this is my cup for me to suffer for your glory, let it be so. Green lies from hell. There is no such a cup from God for anyone to suffer. He calls you his own. Am I talking to someone? He calls you what? His own. He said, let my people go. But why his people? I know they believed in what my son has done. They believed in the blood. They are born again. But they sometimes do wrong. Yes, that's the reason why Jesus Christ died. He died for their past, present, and future sins. As long as they confess and repent, they will always be in my right standing because they are justified by the blood. Am I talking to someone? You know, when you are justified by the blood of Jesus Christ, there is something that, that many of you don't understand. The blood represents the total sum of the life of Jesus Christ. Everything that Jesus is, you are. No, 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 you don't understand this. You don't understand can I put this? Everything that Jesus is, so are you. When God says you are his people, that's why he said, okay, can you go? He said, let my son Israel go. He's looking at you through this, the eyes of Jesus. Let my son Jesus, who can hold Jesus captive? No one. Your situation cannot hold you captive because in Jesus you live. In Jesus you move. In Jesus you have your being. So no situation should be able to keep you bondage. Am I talking to someone? 
You cannot be kept bondage by anything. The justification by the blood of Jesus Christ that brought through, that brought forth your salvation and righteousness cannot be reversed. No, no, no. You, 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 I think Mr. Mr. Langer is the only one who was, can, can you hear me? The justification. You are justified to prosper. You are justified to live the life of increase. You are justified to live a life of healing. You are justified to live a life and life in abundance. And that justification, as long as you have believed in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, you are in right standing with God. As you stand before your God, do not stand before God as the guilty one. Stand before God as the one who is ready to be saved. That's why, that's why the children of Israel, when they ate the lamb, God said, do not eat it sitting down. Take your belt. Take your belt. Put your belt on your waist. Take your staff and eat the lamb. Why? Because you are about to leave bondage. Hallelujah. You are about to do what? To leave what bondage? Hallelujah. Am I talking to someone? Do not listen to the pain. Listen to your Moses. Do not, do not be discouraged by what you are going through. Listen to your Moses. Do not listen to the situation. Listen to your Moses. Your promises are outlined. And they are settled in the heaven. No person, no one, will ever reverse that which God has done for you. Hallelujah. But pastor, it's painful. Yes, it's painful. But those are the signs of breakthrough. Pastor, I, can, I cannot see any breakthrough. All that I see around me is pain. Don't worry, you don't have to see it. God sees it. That's the reason why he's saying he will take you out. He didn't say you will take yourself out. Hallelujah. Whether you cannot see it, believe in the one who sees it. The Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He said, I will hold you by my right hand. I will take you out. I will redeem you. He sees it. You don't have... Don't allow yourself to be blinded by pain. I don't know why I'm stuck here. Don't be blinded by pain. Don't be blinded by discouragement. Don't be blinded by the harshness of what you are going through. Lift up your eyes unto Jesus. The Lord, the, the, the beginner, the author of your faith. He's the one who's supposed to, to, to get you where he's supposed to be. Let this righteousness Soak, soak into this. You have the right standing with God. You are not a reject. Am I talking to you? Say I'm not a reject. Say God loves me as much as he loves Jesus Christ. Say when God looks at me, there is no difference in his eyes between me and Jesus Christ. Say we are the same. Because I'm justified by the blood of Jesus Christ. I have received my righteousness through the shed blood on the cross. That is the language that you must speak daily. Declare that language daily. Hallelujah. 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 I want us to go to Genesis 15, verse 6 in Amplified. Do you have Amplified? Genesis 15, verse 6 in Amplified. 15, verse 6 in Amplified. They don't have it. He said, And he, Abraham, believed in, trusted in, relied on, remained steadfast to the Lord. And he counted to him as righteousness. Right standing with God. Can you see that? 
Number one, rely on God. Trust in God. Remain important. Remain in God. Hallelujah. You must do what? Remain in the blood. Remain steadfast, meaning unshakable, unmovable. When pain comes, say, I praise you, Lord, because these are the birth pains. I'm giving birth to my, to my breakthrough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you, can, you, can you look at something? Exodus 13, verse 21 and 22. Exodus 13, verse 21 and 22. After the Israelites slaughtered the lamb and put the blood on the doorpost, what happened? And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way and by night in a pillar of fire to give them the light to go by day and night. He took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of the fire by night from before the people. What? The blood of, the, blood of the lamb, of a sheep, releases the glory of the Lord upon the Israelites. They were justified to be positioned to walk under the glory of the Lord. How about the blood of Jesus Christ? Do you know where you are right now? The, the cloud of the glory is not above you anymore. By the reason of the blood of Jesus Christ, the cloud of the glory is not about you, and is not above you day by night. It is within you. No, no, you, know, you, don't, you don't understand. You don't understand. It is within you. You are the walking testimony of glory day and night. Why? Because you are forever present in the glory of God. You have the right standing with God. You are where God is because of the righteousness that was bestowed upon you through the justification by the blood. Hallelujah. So, you don't have to, you know, you live by what you know. God said, I entered into a covenant with Abraham so that he can know. When Abraham knows, he, he, he started behaving differently. When they said, when God said, kill your Isaac, because of what he knew, he did not hesitate. Allow the revelation of the righteous, of your righteousness in God. To give you perpetual victory in life. What you know will take you where you want to be. Hallelujah. Don't allow, I'm going to put this. If you sin, if you do wrong, the first thing that you must do, 1 John 1, 9, confess your sins and repent. And the Bible says that he is quick and just to restore you from all forms of unrighteousness. And when you are restored, know that you are in right standing with God. Even if Satan can come and try to remind you what you did, say, Satan, it's only you who can remember what happened. The blood of Jesus Christ has wiped off after my confession, my repentance, I've given permission to the blood of Jesus Christ to wipe off whatever you think you know about me. I'm 100% I'm sure that I'm still in right standing with God. I am still a candidate of breakthrough. I'm still a candidate of healing. I'm still a candidate of increase and promotion. Hallelujah. Am I talking to someone? There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. 
For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us what? Free from the law of sin and death. Hallelujah. Say I'm free. Say I'm free from the law of sin and death. I'm justified by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let us go to Romans 3, 24, 26 in closing. If I say in closing again, don't remind me the first one. Treat every closing that I say as the first one. Romans 3, 24 to 26. I am the righteousness of God through the blood of Jesus. Not through my works. My responsibility is to believe and it will be counted for me as what? As righteous. Hallelujah. I believe. Say, I believe. Say, say, I, say, 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 I believe. And it's counted for me as righteousness. Can you read Romans 3, 24, 26? And they may have righteousness put to their credit freely by his grace through the salvation which is in where? In Christ Jesus. Whom God has put forward as the sign of his mercy through faith by what? By his blood. Say, can, can, can you read that one? Say, by his blood. Like say, to make it clear his righteousness when in his pity God led the sins of earlier times to go without punishment. Wow. Say my sins are gone without me receiving punishment because I'm justified by the blood of Jesus. That is who you are. 26. And to make clear his righteousness now so that he, he might himself be upright and give righteousness to him who has faith. In what? In Christ Jesus. Can you see, can you see where, where you get your righteousness? You believe in what the blood has done. Your responsibility is to only believe. Hallelujah. Not to be crucified again on the cross. When you take Holy Communion, it's a sign of what? Faith. You believe. Hallelujah. I want to put it to you this afternoon that when you allow your spirit man to receive this word, you will see change in your surrounding. That change will start with your soul. You will receive the agape, the peace of God. That is not dependent on circumstances. The joy of the Lord that is only dependent on the cross. That will be your portion. When you receive this righteousness, you will begin to walk in healing and health. Hallelujah. You will begin to declare that I am the healed of the Lord. I am healed. When people say that, no, your children are sick. You go to God. You, you, you no longer debate with Satan. Hey, Satan, I kick you. No, 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 no. We, we don't enter. They say, Father, I have a right standing with you. So are my children. I thank you that by your stripes they are healed. That's a prayer of faith. And you walk in what? In healing. Hallelujah. 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 Let us read Romans 5.1. Romans 5.1. What does it say, Romans 5.1? Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God, our Lord Jesus Christ. That is uh, NIV, New King James. Which says, For this reason, because we have righteousness through faith, let us be at peace with God 
through our God. There are people who are not at peace with God. Whenever they see God, they see the Father who is about to punish them. Am I talking to someone? And even when things go wrong, I knew it is my punishment. God is punishing me. Okay, let me check. What have I done wrong? Is God punishing me through my child? That is the sign of not having peace with God. Hallelujah. So when you have peace with God, whatever happens to you, you say, Father, this is not my portion. And healing and restoration will be released unto you. Hallelujah. May, may the righteousness of God stand up. If you are in right standing with God, stand up. We're going to read Romans 5, 9 again. In closing. What does he say? Romans 5, 9. Okay. I wanted you to look at the sequence. What comes first, salvation or justification? Justification comes first. So you are not saved by your own deeds. Hallelujah. When, God, when Jesus died on the cross, you received the justification for salvation. The moment you believed you received the righteousness in the blood. Hallelujah. That there is, you know, when you say, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ. Satan cannot stand you. Why? He knows that there is no accusation that will stick to you. Why? Because of the justification. Hallelujah. Because of what? So, you were saved because of what? Of the justification of the blood of Jesus. I want you to lift up your hands. I want you to begin to receive this justification. As you receive this justification, I want to put it to you, healing to those who are, who are sick will start taking place. Those who need restoration, restoration will take place in your bodies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, open your mouth and begin to talk to your father. River Sandy Russia. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the justification through the blood of Jesus Christ. Not of our works. We thank you for salvation through the finished works of Calvary. We thank you, Father, that we have the right standing with you through the blood. For Father, you are a covenant-keeping God, a God who keeps his covenant for a thousand generations. We thank you, mighty God, that we have peace with God through the blood. We thank you for this peace. 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 Come on, talk to him. Talk to your Father. Talk to him. He loves you so much. He calls you his own. He calls you his own. He loves you so much. Whatever that you might have done in the past, I want to put it to you this morning, this afternoon, that by your faith in Jesus Christ, you have received the right standing with God. Rebo sandi mbo saribashia. Renda mbo saribashia ribakarabosia. Lord, we give you glory, Lord. Lord, I thank you that I'm justified through your blood. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to put it to you that... Um,
your faith, your faith outside righteousness is as weak as it can become. Your faith of everything that you are believing God for should be in your right standing with God. You cannot have faith outside the justification by the blood of Jesus Christ. That is not faith. That's hope. Amen? So understand that you are justified and saved and you are in right standing with God. And let that be the foundation of your faith. Hallelujah. Let it be what? The foundation of your faith. So you should say, my faith is in my right standing with God. Hallelujah. When you approach God in prayer with that belief, when you say amen, you'll be at peace that whatsoever that I've prayed for is done. And then anxiety will go. That's what the Bible said, be anxious for nothing. But in everything, do what? Give thanks. Why? Because of your right standing with God. Not through your works. I'll remind you again. When God says, my people, referring to the Israelites who were in Egypt for 400 years, they did not know anything about worship. They were in slavery for years. They did not understand who God is. But God did not look at their deeds. He remembered the covenant. Hallelujah. Even today, God is, remembers the covenant that he has with you through the blood of Jesus. Our responsibility is to believe in Jesus Christ, have faith in him, and confess our sins if, if needs be. Hallelujah. Are we together? Lift up your hands and make this declaration. Say, I surrender my spirit, soul, and body. I declare and decree through the finished works of Calvary that I am the righteousness of God through the cross. I am justified. I say I have every right to stand before my Father God and put my petition before him. Say I have every right to receive answers to my prayers because of my justification through the blood, my salvation through the blood, my righteousness through the blood. Say, that's my identity. Say, I declare and decree that from this day onwards, my identity is in the blood of Jesus. Come on, give him praise. If you believe it, thank him in advance. Come on, you can do better than that. Thank him in advance. Thank him in advance. Thank him in advance. If you believe it, thank him in advance. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. It is done. Watch the space. Watch the space. You will be walking in the newness of life. This is what we call salvation. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. If, if you are happy, come on, give him praise. I want you to, I want you 